Yes. And I would want to understand why you want to advise because you're saying including small scale businesses. Businesses. Yes. They are also advised to have a certified secretary. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Wow. Why do you think that would be important? Very well. First of all, to begin with, everybody who starts a business, mm -hmm. they have a vision that that business will grow to become a very successful business. Mm -hmm. When you start a business, you start with a plan. And your business plan basically sets the journey that you want to take as a business. There are so many aspects of the business that requires to be put as part of a firm and a strong foundation mm -hmm. when you're starting your business. And this is because you've got a big vision that you envision when you're starting. Mm -hmm. Because nobody wants to start a business that will fail. All businesses start very small and they grow to become the big businesses that we all know, that we do encounter with. So the reason why we are advising our micro traders, our small scale traders, we'll call them mamamboga, ama watu wakuuza mutumba. Sorry to use that term. Mm -hmm. But all these businesses in the minds of the people who started them, they have big plans that one day they will become very big businesses. people Susie Ledadam living positively regardless doesn't matter the point at which you are in life but we rock positivity all the way I'm born again restored to Christ so happy about that are you thank you so much as you answer that question to your heart not to me of course and so today I'm so so happy because we have a guest in the studio and I want you to call your neighbor Tell them today we are dealing with businesses who make money, money, money. So we must know how to do it in the right way, the right manner. And so today I have an expert in the house. And I want to believe you're going to learn something. So as you call your neighbor, you can also take your notebook and your pen so that you get to learn a thing or two. Before I talk a lot, let me just introduce our guest of the day. How are you? Very well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much for creating time for us. Thank you so much, Susan, for visiting us today. Yes. Yeah. And so I'll just let you first of all introduce yourself, let our viewers know who you are. Thank you very much, Susan. Mm. My name is Isaac Nduru, FCS. I'm a company secretary by profession. I'm also a lawyer as well an entrepreneur. Susan, Susie says she's born again. Mm -hmm. I'm also born again. And uh, very happy to have this conversation with you, our viewers. And thank you so much. Wow. Very happy to, that you're having me today okay. to have this conversation. Okay. And uh, also very happy to interact with your viewers mm. so that we can be able to enlighten them on uh, why is it that they should consider having a certified secretary in the organizations. All right. Yeah. And so I will just start from where you have mentioned. Eh? So who is a certified secretary? Thank you very much, Susie. A certified secretary is a profession who has gone through training. Mm -hmm. Usually, we are trained and examined by CASNEB. Many accountants know CASNEB. Even secretaries, we are also uh, examined by CASNEB. So we go through training, we do examination, we are trained in many areas of practice, mm -hmm. especially in business. All right. Because we are trained in accounting, mm -hmm. we are trained in financial management, mm -hmm. we are trained in human resource management, okay. we are trained in law, okay. we are trained uh, in communication and public relations, public administration, wow. corporate governance, human resource management, 
And last but not least, we are trained on being good certified secretaries. Okay. Yeah. I, I feel like you people, when you enter in a company, you're going to displace all of us. All those roles. We, I went to school to do administration, and now you, you went and did everything. <laughs> <laughs> wow, we'll get to there to know whether we still need anybody in that office, anybody mm. else, apart mm. from a certified secretary, right? Yeah. So what are generally the roles of a certified secretary in any organization? Thank you so much, Susie. So... I talked about what we are trained in. Yes. But I didn't mention that after being trained, we are also examined. Mm -hmm. After we get examined and pass, mm -hmm. then we are registered mm -hmm. by a body called the Certified Public Secretaries Board. Mm -hmm. And then once you are registered, you become a member of the Institute of Certified Secretary. Mm -hmm. And that's now the body that licenses us and regulates us as professionals. Mm -hmm. So now, back to your question. Once now you get certified, mm -hmm. it's only when now you can be able to meet now the public mm -hmm. and offer secretarial services and support. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And which are these uh, companies that require to have a certified secretary? All right. I'll start by the ones which by law they must uh -huh. have a certified secretary. Yes. Then we'll come up to the point whereby now we shall start encouraging the small and micro business businesses to have a certified secretary. Mm -hmm. So by law, every company that has got uh, issued capital of over five million, mm -hmm. it's supposed to have a certified secretary. Okay. Number one. Number two, all banks, all insurance companies, and all listed companies by law, they must have a certified secretary. Mm -hmm. Now from there, we have got state corporations. State corporations, these are the likes of uh, KPLC. We have uh, KPC, Kenya Pipeline Corporation. Mm -hmm. We have Kenya Broadcasting Corporation, KBC. Mm -hmm. Those ones are the state's owned bodies. Even them by law also, they're required to have a certified secretary mm -hmm. then also we have got county governments we have got uh, county public service boards they are also supposed to have a certified secretary who is also the ceo of the public service board mm -hmm. now those ones are the ones by law that are required to have a certified Such secretary, secretary. Mm -hmm. however all other uh, registered companies are encouraged to have a certified secretary. Mm -hmm. And this does not uh, limit to even a business that has just been launched. Mm -hmm. It means all businesses which are registered. Mm -hmm. However, uh, allow me to also mention about uh, we've got different forms of businesses in the country mm -hmm. so that we also don't confuse our viewers. Mm -hmm. We have partnerships. Partnerships by law, are not required to have a certified secretary. Mm -hmm. We have got sole proprietorships. These are the business names which people do register. Also, those ones are not required to have a certified secretary. Then we have got limited liability partnerships. A bit of an advanced form of partnership in that it has got limited liability. Even those ones also by law, they are not required to have a certified secretary. Mm -hmm. So... The entities that perhaps uh, most of our viewers would be more interested in are the limited companies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Ah, thank you so much. Huh? Um, I, I won't concentrate much on uh, what a certified secretary is doing in these big institutions that you have mentioned, because I think mm -hmm. it's a bit elaborate to them, uh, even as you're setting up a, a, an organization and even at, as it has grown to those levels, like when we talk of KPLC and the, yes. the likes. Eh? Yes. But now I want to add a start with the common one. I'm sure you're saying it's not actually by rule. Yes. It's, it's advisable. To, yes. to have them eh? yes. and i would want to understand why you want to advise because you're saying including small scale businesses businesses yes they okay. also advise to have a certified secretary mm -hmm. okay yes wow why do you think that would be important very well first of all 
to begin with, everybody who starts a business, mm -hmm. they have a vision that that business will grow to become a very successful business. Mm -hmm. When you start a business, you start with a plan. And your business plan basically sets the journey that you want to take as a business. There are so many aspects of the business that requires to be put as part of a firm and a strong foundation mm -hmm. when you're starting your business. And this is because you've got a big vision that you envision when you're starting. Mm -hmm. Because nobody wants to start a business that will fail in the first year after inception. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure even our viewers, you not want to imagine a situation whereby you start your business and then after 12 months of starting, it falls down. You want to start a business which will be able to grow and to become the Mathais, the Magunas of this world. Mm -hmm. Just to mention a few. Mm -hmm. You want to start a business that uh, you will be able to sustain it and to have grow, to become a multinational. All businesses start very small and they grow to become the big businesses that we all know, that we do encounter with. So the reason why we are advising our micro traders, our small scale traders, we'll call them mamamboga, ama watu wakuuza mutumba. Sorry to use that term. Mm -hmm. But all these businesses, in the minds of the people who started them, they have big plans that one day they will become very big businesses. Now back to your question. Why is it then that we are suggesting this micro business person requires to have a certified secretary. First of all, Susie, the reason why you need to have a certified secretary mm -hmm. to begin with. Number one, like I said, if you are incorporating a company, you are creating a legal person. Okay. A legal person, a person who is viewed by law to have obligations and to have rights that are enforceable. Okay. By the time when you are deciding to incorporate a company, you've already gone through several hurdles. Mm. Because you are creating a legal being. Mm. Now, the moment you create a legal being, that legal being has got rights, it has got obligations, and that's the reason why you'll find the regulators will start now following you. Because like I told you, when you're operating a business name, like most of us do have business, name, business names, and you'll go to the cyber and you get it registered in a day or two, yeah. that business name cannot be able to own assets in its own name. It's only limited liability companies which can own assets in their own name. Mm -hmm. Even when you have your own business, the only thing it will do, it will be able to operate its own bank accounts, it will be able to transact in those bank accounts. Of course, open tills, but that's it. Mm -hmm. When now you want to start uh, buying property, mm -hmm. then you start now realizing you now are required to incorporate a company. Mm -hmm. So now, when you have this company, like I've said, it's a creature of the law. Then it means that uh, you have to maintain it. Just in the same, same way that you maintain your business, you have to maintain this company. Mm -hmm. And that's where the certified secretary comes in. Yeah. I want to tell our viewers something. Our viewers, we have most of you who do incorporations of these companies in cyber cafes, where you will go and find cyber cafe, person knows how to fill those forms, and they'll even help you to incorporate a company. But there's something they don't tell you, that after you finish the incorporation of that company, those incorporation forms form one of the most important KYC documents when you're opening bank accounts and even when you're applying for tenders. A certified secretary will tell you that. I've seen several cases whereby a company is opened, you get a certificate of incorporation and a CR12. You know a CR12? That form, nice blue looking thing. Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Mm -hmm. That one. Okay. You get a certificate of incorporation and a CR12. Then you go to open a bank account with the bank. Then the bank asks you, where are the other forms that you filled when you're incorporating? Then you go to the cyber. 
Then you find the cyber person who was there at that time has relocated. What do you do? Susie? Mm -hmm. But when you have a certified secretary, remember like I told you, mm -hmm. this is a person who is licensed. You can be able to follow them. Okay. They have a license. Mm -hmm. You can complain to mm -hmm. the institute. Mm -hmm. They are professionals. They are trained. If you go to them, they will avail those forms. Okay. And only then, you'll be able to open your bank account. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is this. When you're starting your business, you have to institutionalize good practice. Mm -hmm. And good practice entails a lot of things. Because this is a creature of law. Okay. The documentation, how you put, how you keep those documents, how the company is maintained. Mm -hmm. I didn't talk about filing returns for limited companies. By law, all companies are required to file annual return. Failure to which it is a fine. You know how much it is, Suzy? Mm -hmm. 500,000. Mm -hmm. That's not small money. It's not. It's not small money. Mm -hmm. Therefore, it is advisable that you have a certified secretary who will walk you that journey of forming that company and maintaining it and from time to time, when you're doing your business, when you're entering into contracts, like I said, this person has done many things. They will be able to advise you and to give you professional advice. Okay. Yes. Up to now, I'm hearing all of it. It's like it's, on, uh, it's able to help me to be compliant when it comes to the side of the law, eh? yes. that I will not find myself in the wrong uh, side with the law. Mm. Uh, but coming back to my business, mm. uh, does it help in any way in my way of uh, maybe uh, improving my profit margins or anything of the sort or it's purely to make me to be very compliant when it comes to the issues of the law? All right. Susie, you talked about profit margins. <laughs> mm -hmm. I know where you come from. Mm -hmm. You have to make some money Capisce? at the end of the day. Mm. Very well. So, when you look at the bottom line, I want you to look at that issue holistically. Success of a business. How do we define success of a business? Back to the small business, because you, you really are focusing on the small businesses and you think it's going to be a huge cost to have a certified secretary. Yes. By the end of this conversation, mm -hmm. I'll have explained that point very clearly. Mm -hmm. Because it's not about cost. By the way, compliance is non-compliance is very expensive. And to most businesses, non-compliance means even loss of business. And at the worst, it also means that your company risks being sued and you also risk being uh, closed down. Mm -hmm. Now, back to the point of bottom line mm -hmm. and the margins. Mm -hmm. So now, uh, we're talking about this certified secretary and what they do yeah. to your business mm. and what they do in promoting success of your business. Mm. So what happens is that in your business, you've got the people who are helping you to do sales. We're not talking about them. Mm. However, one of the key aspects of a business is decision making and governance. Mm -hmm. And I want to give an example to our viewers that if you have a business, and most of these small businesses perhaps are started by two or three persons. Let's say, for example, Susie, you start a business with your friends or even with Paul here. Hmm. Now, in that case, you must have an institutionalized process of ensuring that the decision-making process and documentation is well done. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm talking about good governance. Mm -hmm. If you look around in our country, the companies that are well governed are very successful. Mm -hmm. You've noted that. I'm very sure you've noted mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Every time you hear of a company that has lost good governance practices, most of them tend to collapse. And it doesn't matter whether they are family businesses which are owned by spouses or siblings. It doesn't matter. What matters is that these businesses, they are required to ensure that the decision-making process 
the governance of that business is done in accordance with the law. So, I've talked about good governance. It's a very, very, very strong aspect of what company secretaries offer to businesses. Mm -hmm. Yes, good corporate governance. Mm -hmm. Yes, and, and and actually that's the concept I want to come out. The the essence of having good governance and these policies in a company, mm. as small as it is, mm. I want to understand what is the gist of it. Yes. Yes. Good. Look, I said this company is a creature mm. of the law. Yes. Unlike human beings, a company has got stakeholders. Mm. That is, the ones who have started it, the owners, mm -hmm. your customers. You talk about government, regulators, KRA, NSSF, NHIF, sorry, chief, right? Yeah. Yeah. Chief. Those are also some other stakeholders which mm -hmm. a company does have. And good governance practices demand that that business puts systems in place yeah. to ensure that all these stakeholders, yeah. their interests are well taken care of. Why? Mm -hmm. If you have your own shop and you don't care about the consequence of what you do, mm -hmm. two chances are that people will either shut you down by walking away or the government will come and shut your business. Yes. But that is on the negative side of it. Mm -hmm. Let's look at the positive side of it. Yeah. When you start your business, then you are required to be very conscious about these aspects. Most of the times they are called small is soft issues. Mm -hmm. Because it becomes extremely difficult to attribute them to the bottom line. Mm -hmm. Back to your point of bottom line. Mm -hmm. Margins. Mm -hmm. It becomes sometimes difficult to attribute them to the margin. Mm -hmm. However, they promote the success of the business. Mm -hmm. Because a successful business is a business that takes into account mm -hmm. the interest of the stakeholders. Okay. And that's one of the things which we do help a company in coming up with. Okay. For example, if it is a charma, which I'm very sure most of our viewers are in, mm -hmm. then you're able to put structures that will help you to make decisions. Mm -hmm. good, good governance what is this good governance all about? We're talking about accountability. We are talking about transparency. You know? So there is a transparent process of making decisions. For example, meetings are called meetings of the directors mm -hmm. or meetings of shareholders. Mm -hmm. By the way, Susie, mm -hmm. Chamas also have AGMs, right? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Yeah. And these AGMs must have an agenda. Mm -hmm. And who helps in doing this? Certified secretary. Okay. I thought in each other did. No. <laughs> no. The chair lady has a very important role, by the way. And that's the reason why they require a certified secretary. Mm -hmm. Because the chair lady and the secretary will together formulate an agenda and agree mm -hmm. what is it that you are going to discuss at a meeting. Mm -hmm. That agenda is well done mm -hmm. and shared in good time mm -hmm. to the members. Mm -hmm. So when members come, one, they know what is going to be discussed. Two, they know what decisions are required to pass. And three, they'll have gotten that notice in good time. Okay. Yes. Wow. Okay. I, 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 I also look at it and um, I hear what you're talking about and mm. uh, personally I have done a demean and I look at it and I'm wondering mm. uh, if there won't be a repetition of roles uh, yeah. or even conflict in terms of uh, our, our roles in an organization. Uh, actually, we also have a, a, an accountant to mm. make sure that the books are well run. Yes. I understand the concept where you're telling us that for any business to be successful, the systems must run effectively. Yes. Because definitely, if they are not, 
then we miss the point yes. because you're not even able to know the the, the, the loopholes where if maybe we go at a loss where it came from so the yeah. systems must be running yes. and i'm thinking we are already having so many people to run this system because we have the accountant we're supposed to check on our books mm -hmm. we have susie here who is the admin we're supposed to make sure that uh, the company policies and laws are uh, the kenyan or rather the government laws are well Mm -hmm. followed. Yeah. So will we not have a repetition of roles when you're bringing in a satisfied secretary? Sorry, Susie. You forgot about you have Isaac here mm -hmm. who is coming to tell us about governance. Okay. Susie, mm -hmm. you see all these professionals, all these individuals within an organization, mm -hmm. they all operate within a framework. Mm -hmm. Like I said, mm -hmm. a company has got two key organs. Mm -hmm. One is the shareholders. Mm -hmm. Two is the directors. And I want to still emphasize again to our viewers, a company is a creature of law. And the reason those two organs are separate is because of the fact that each makes certain decisions which the other may not make. And that is now where good governance is required. Okay. Accountant will help to do the day-to-day. -day. Mm -hmm. The Susie mm -hmm. will help to do admin. Mm -hmm. And then the certified secretary will help to ensure that the company mm -hmm. is operated using the best governance practices. Oh, okay. For example, mm -hmm. decision making is done mm -hmm. in compliance with the, with the laws. Okay. Two, all the stakeholders' interests are well taken care of. Mm -hmm. The shareholders mm -hmm. and also the, the various regulators. And more importantly, the secretary will make sure that those two organs I've talked about, mm -hmm. the shareholders mm -hmm. and the directors, mm -hmm. are working in support of each other. Okay. Because there's always the danger mm -hmm. that uh, you feel you're the shareholder and you're also director. Mm -hmm. But when you are deciding or when you're in a director's meeting, yeah. you have to think like a director. Mm -hmm. And then when you're in a shareholders meeting, you think like a shareholder. Yeah. So there are those differences. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the success of organizations mm -hmm. always is on how you're able to harness those two organs. Mm -hmm. That becomes important mm -hmm. as a business becomes sophisticated. Mm -hmm. I want to give an example to our viewers. Today, uh, one of the challenges that many of us do encounter is capital. You start your business, you use your savings, you grow up to a certain level, you now require funding. And that's why now the issues start coming up. Mm -hmm. Why? You can either get funding from another shareholder, mm -hmm. you can go to the bank, or you can go to look for investors. Mm -hmm. When the investors come, what they do, they get into the house, into your business, they ask you for your documentation. They ask you, where are your minutes? They ask you, have you been filing your returns? And many other things. Mm. And Susie, if you go to the bank today and you have your own private company, those are some of the key things they will always ask for compliance. Okay. They'll ask you for your returns. Mm. The ones which are filed with the registrar of companies. Mm. Half the times, most of us don't know about those things. Sure. Like I said, mm. there is even a penalty of not filing that return. Yeah. But you just come to realize, oops, I should have filed those returns. Then you start asking, you go to the cyber guy, as most of us tend to do. Okay. Leaving out certified secretaries. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Uh, the, the, when you want to engage a certified secretary, mm -hmm. do you have to have him like a full-time uh, staff in your company or you can just contract maybe to help you once? When in need? Uh -huh. Thank you, Susie, for that question. Back to the point of bottom line, mm -hmm. Maji. Mm -hmm. Actually, you don't need to have a certified secretary as a full-time employee. By the way, even some very big companies, mm -hmm. I would not want to mention names, mm. actually outsource 
Oh. If allowed to, I can mention and you'll be so shocked. Mm -hmm. Blue chip. Big telcos. Mm -hmm. Actually, outsource. Mm -hmm. You actually don't need to have a certified secretary as a full-time employee. Mm -hmm. Like I said, with getting this professional, mm -hmm. just accessing them mm -hmm. for an afternoon, you'll be able to get so much wealth of experience mm -hmm. that will be very useful for your business. Okay. And uh, you can engage them as and when you need them. Okay. Yeah. And outsourcing, mm -hmm. like I've said, is actually being embraced okay. by very big entities. Okay. Yeah. I would imagine it's cost effective eh, to, it's a, you'll have the services, but you're able to budget on the same. Exactly. Uh, okay. Now, having known uh, the good side of having a certified secretary, mm. how do, do one now, how do we get to engage one? And uh, how do you access them? And mm. also, uh, for one who is very blank, we don't know. Okay, we have had, we know we need, <laughs> we, require, <laughs> we require this. Yeah. And also maybe combining with that question, mm. uh, how would one, if the one want to take that as their path of the career, mm. of being a certified, certified secretary, secretary, how do they go about that? Thank you very much, Susie, for that question. I love it. First of all, uh, we have got Institute of Certified secretaries mm -hmm. we have got Kasnel. many people know Kasnel. Mm. kenya national examination of accountants and secretaries board mm -hmm. i think i said it right mm -hmm. so but the best source is institute of certified secretaries in fact they maintain a list of all the licensed certified secretaries mm -hmm. for the ones who want to know about studying certified secretary again ICS that is the Institute of Certified Secretary they have a mentorship program mm -hmm. for young CSS mm -hmm. they bring them on board they help them interact with experienced CSS they are taken through a process Mm -hmm. And at the end of it all, they also graduate. Mm -hmm. Kasneb also is a very good source of some of this information because mm -hmm. Kasneb actually are the ones who examine. Mm -hmm. They are the examining body. Mm -hmm. So the Institute of Certified Secretaries has been visiting universities. Perhaps the next time they will visit your university. Mm -hmm. And what they have been doing is to promote the, the profession, mm -hmm. to create awareness so that people can know Mm -hmm. who are certified secretaries. Mm -hmm. Susie, I didn't tell you. Mm -hmm. When I was doing CS, I really struggled to explain to people mm -hmm. what course I was doing. For a very long time, people thought I was doing secretarial. Until I could explain to them, no, not secretarial as in typewriting. <laughs> it is company secretary. <laughs> but the beautiful thing is that... Uh, <laughs> We have got big positions, mm -hmm. secretary general. That would help, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And then recently, cabinet secretary. There was a time I was also feeling very good that um, I'm, because I'm working in a company as a secretary, I'm a company secretary. <laughs> <laughs> Just for you to bust my bubbles and no. And then when I hear them say we need a company secretary, I'm like, what am I doing here? Who am I in this company? <laughs> uh -huh. uh, so, look. Having said that, what I can say the Institute is really and has been trying to do mm -hmm. is to at least make sure people understand what it is that company secretaries do. Because uh, this is something that has been left for sophisticated companies. Yeah, mm -hmm. People don't tend to appreciate that it's a very important role, mm -hmm. even in family businesses. Okay. Because clearly, Susie, mm -hmm. you'll agree with me that... Uh, Many family businesses get into a lot of problems just because they don't have a certified secretary professional who is helping in ensuring that they maintain best practices, mm. accountability, transparency. And by having a certified secretary, you are able to convene board meetings, 
people are able to receive reports because they come from the secretary. Mm -hmm. Meetings are held, decisions are recorded, and actions are tracked. Mm -hmm. So if you look at that, mm -hmm. you clearly can see that uh, if you want to craft a path to the success of your business, mm -hmm. then you need to start thinking about engaging a certified secretary right from the point of starting your business so that you can institutionalize mm -hmm. good practice right from the beginning. Okay. Yes. Is there a point that is too late to engage one? It's never too late, Susie. Okay. Even now. Mm -hmm. Because I think in this conversation, we've been able to really inform our viewers mm -hmm. and what are the benefits of doing it. Yes. I think it is never too late. Okay. In fact, any time, is always the best time. Okay. And thank you so much, Susie, for creating this opportunity mm. because we are able to enlighten our viewers mm. so that they can take this into account. Mm. And then we tell them that it is not too late. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you so much, even for also for creating time to enlighten us and to make us understand that mm. some of these big names we think they are meant for those big companies and yeah. we are not thinking me as Susie I'm not thinking like a small business really needs that yeah. because actually I'm terming is as it is business yeah. but like, you know, it doesn't look like it's a business that is being operated it mm. looks the big name company yeah? Yeah. not knowing that my small business that is where also that is where I would desire it exactly to one time get to there that's your vision mm. Susie mm -hmm. that you want to grow your business to become that big that big business yes and like I've said because it's not expensive to have a certified secretary mm -hmm. and uh, the certified secretary is at the heart of the business mm -hmm. because you see they are the heart of decision making mm -hmm. they are the heart of the registration then you realize that it's a very important person to have for your entity ah. yeah wow um, since you are this the, 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 the expert here Mm. I will allow you to maybe touch on any other area that you think it is of importance for us to mention it to mm. our audience that I have not asked about and that you think it should not be left out. Yeah, thank you. Mm. I think I've tried to mention quite a number of things to our viewers mm. of what they need to take into account at all times when they are setting up their businesses. But I think I have to re-emphasize that uh, these companies which we have are actually creatures of the law and by the law allowing us to have them mm. it also put some certain obligations that have to be taken into consideration at all times i want to underscore importance of good governance mm -hmm. and good governance doesn't mean even yourself with your small business you don't require to have good governance good governance is a practice that is encouraged for all types of businesses. At certain times, you'll find that uh, people are having family businesses and they still don't think that having good governance is a good thing. Susie, most of the people or the businesses that we actually do serve are actually family businesses. Okay. In fact, very few which are corporate businesses. Mm -hmm. And our, our viewers would agree. These big corporations, they're only a handful. Most of the businesses that you have in our country are actually family businesses. And why do they collapse? Lack of good governance. Okay. Lack of good governance. So I think it's good that we encourage our viewers and encourage our audience to ensure that they start having these best practices, ensuring that you hold board meetings. Even if you are a family business, I mean, even spouses should have board meetings. You are having your company whereby the directors is Mr. and Mrs. and your children, you're supposed to have board meetings, which have to be properly called and decisions have to be properly documented. It might look as if it's a lot to do, Susie, mm -hmm. but it is very important, okay. very important. Mm. I think that's what I would want to emphasize. Ah, okay, to okay. Just to ask the last one, eh? uh, the structures and the policies that you make in these big companies are they the same ones that apply in these small small businesses? Thank you, Susie. Governance is governance for all businesses. Mm -hmm. Transparency is transparency mm -hmm. from the big company 
to a small company. Okay. What happens is that the circumstances are different. A small company may have a few shareholders, big companies may have more shareholders, mm. and more dynamics and perhaps bigger problems to deal with. But you realize that good governance applies across. And the same same principles that work in a big multinational are the same same principles which will work in a small business. Mm. Accountability, transparency. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Thank you so much. Uh, guys, what do you think of that conversation? Do you have a question on the same? Just put it on the comment section and I know that I will, it is not live, but I know I will have a way of getting it. this other side. And I hope you'll be ready to help us and to answer us any other questions that our viewers may feel they want to ask you. Thank you, Susie. Mm -hmm. Like we said, mm -hmm. any questions, refer them to Susie mm -hmm. and they'll get their way to us. Mm -hmm. So feel free to ask any question. Will you charge us? Uh, no, I'm not going to charge because <laughs> of Susie. Mm -hmm. And I say this because you found time to come yeah. and look for us. Yeah. I think for us, what you are doing now is to spread this message mm. so that people, our people mm. can uh, start embracing mm. some of these uh, best practices. Wow. So Susie, mm -hmm. no charge. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Mm. Asante San. Thank you. Thank you for keeping it at Suzy Ledada. And I hope you have enjoyed the session. I also hope that you have subscribed. If you've not subscribed to our channel, kindly do so. Subscribing is free, but it's a way of supporting my work. So kindly subscribe and also share this. Let everybody's business grow so that we all grow together and we all succeed together. So don't be mean with this information. Please share it out. For now, bye. Bye. Kindly subscribe. <laughs> Let's support Susie. Wow. Ah, thank you. Welcome.